Welcome to the 2021 Nalib Virtual Lodge. I'm Ben Lopez, Executive Director at Nalib, and on behalf of the team, we thank you for joining us today for our Sundance panel titled Building a More Accessible Industry. It's sponsored by IMDb Pro and in partnership with Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. Our discussion about Latinx disability representation in storytelling is being led today by our moderator, Easter Seals' own Nick Novicki. Take it away, Nick. Hello, thank you so much, Ben, and everyone at Nalip. We are so excited for today's panel, building a more accessible industry. And this is an amazing panel. We can't thank uh, Nalip enough for hosting this panel in partnership with the Easter Sales Disability Film Challenge. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Nick Novicki. I'm an actor, comedian, producer, and I'm the founder and director of the Easter Sales Disability Film Challenge. Now, the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge is a weekend film competition where over the course of a weekend, participants write, shoot, edit, and submit three to five minute films that have somebody with a disability in front of or behind the camera. I'm so excited that this is at Sundance this year. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm wearing my red suit uh, because uh, this is an, an exciting event and it's just an event during this time of quarantine where so many of us are staying inside. Uh, today, this is a really uh, amazing partnership, uh, as I said, with Nalip. And, you know, to have an organization like Nalip that really helps uh, make people with disabilities more included, but all different underrepresented groups more included. I actually have a long standing relationship with Nalip. I produced a film called One Halloween, where it was for HBO. Uh, that we ended up getting a grant and were able to, to produce this film. And we hired disabled veterans for that film. And so this panel is gonna be really the start of us continuing to do more and more activations throughout the year. Now the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge, as I said, it is a weekend film competition to try to help more people with disabilities get involved in the entertainment industry. One in four Americans has some form of disability yet we're in less than 3% of film and TV shows. And we are so proud that the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge, we're actually making a dent and we're changing those odds because we're having people with disabilities take their career in their own hands. And I'm so proud of the diversity of all of our participants in front of and behind the camera and, and really all the talented Latinx uh, participants that I'm gonna introduce in a second. And it's so exciting to have an organization like Nalip that further helps uh, make sure that those talented Latinx uh, participants that, that work as actors or crew members with and without disabilities take part and know about the film challenge. Now today, today's panel, we're gonna highlight uh, three really talented Latinx film challenge participants. These are uh, people with disabilities that work as creators, as artists, and we have so many others that weren't able to be highlighted today, but we're gonna to continue to work together with Nalip and the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge, highlighting those stories. But who's ready to get this started? There's no one there to clap. I'm just me in the background. Uh, <laughs> but I'm so excited to introduce our, our three panelists uh, today. These are all Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge participants, but they're all successful artists and activists. And I'm gonna let them introduce themselves further. Uh, starting with Danielle Perez. Hi, thank you, Nick. Um, I'm Danielle Perez. I'm a stand-up comedian, actor, writer. I participated in the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. And uh, I just wrapped a movie with Jody Sweden and Alec Mappa in quarantine, <laughs> which filming a movie in a pandemic, never thought I'd be here, but um, I'm also at Sundance and never thought I'd be here too. So I'm glad to be participating here. That's awesome. Thank you, Danielle. And Danny J. Gomez. Hi, everyone. My name is Danny J. Gomez. Thank you, Nalip, for having us. Um, I was injured in 2016 in a mountain biking accident that left me paralyzed from the waist down. Uh, from there, I didn't know where my life would go. And in 2017, I found the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge, and I was able to meet a great inclusive community of filmmakers and other people that look like me. And that really helped me to kind of forge my path ahead. Uh, after the film challenge, many doors started to open and I recently starred in 
NBC's New Amsterdam. It's my first guest star ever. Uh, so because of Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge, I've had all these opportunities. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Andy Aries. Hi, I'm Andy Arias, and I am so happy to be here with such a dynamic panel. I'm an actor, producer, stand-up comedian, and I work on national policy. For the last two years, I've participated in the Disability Film Challenge, really focusing on diversity and inclusion and intersectionality of disability and LGBTQ and Latinx. So I'm really, really excited to be here and look forward to the discussion. Thanks so much, Andy. And I love that background here. We're all Thanks. we're all kind of doing it. It's exciting that we're normally we'd all be in the room together and we'd hang out, but it feels like we're all here together. And this is going to be a casual discussion where we're really just highlighting each other. And many of you out there, you uh, probably don't have disabilities and you're tuning in and you're listening. You know, the, the biggest thing I'll say is that we have so many talented people with disabilities. Uh, I encourage you all to watch these films, the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge on our YouTube channel. Go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com. And also, we're going to be doing plugs at the end of the session, but I want to start with plugs. Make sure you look up each of these talented artists and hire them because they're going to make your productions better and they're going to make the world more inclusive. So I think it's pretty cool that we have this uh, diversity in this movement where we have more and more people with disabilities that are getting included. And rather than just talking about the lack of inclusion, we're really taking our career in our own hands. Uh, why do you think uh, the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge is important? And uh, we're going to start uh, with you, Danielle. I think the Disability Film Challenge is important because it allows you to have a body of work and proof of concept, right? So many people talk about what they wanna write, what they wanna star in, what they wanna do, what they wanna be. But with the Disability Film Challenge, you have a deadline and it's go time, baby. <laughs> you gotta get it in. Uh, you have 55 hours, but being able to call on your community whether it's your friend who does sound or maybe has nice camera equipment and your friends that you think are so talented and funny and you want to act with but being able to form community and put that to work and use and create an actual product that you can then put out on the internet that people can see it lets the industry know that you're here and you're capable and that you can do it that's awesome danny yeah, definitely uh, what everything Danielle said. And uh, for me, though, it, besides all that, it was finding this community that I didn't know existed. I didn't know that uh, they were disabled actors because before I was injured later in my life and I really knew nothing about disability. I didn't know anyone who was disabled. I didn't know how to act around people who were disabled. So when I found this, the, the challenge, it, it really challenged me to you know, go outside of my shell. And the thing that helped me was that there were other people with disabilities around me who were doing this thing. So I, I didn't feel alone because it can be very jarring, you know, being an able-bodied person and then all of a sudden becoming disabled and not knowing what your world in t you know, has in store for you. So I think just finding this community and knowing that it's that was there, it, I think it's a huge thing for artists, anyone, writers, directors, actors, like there is a whole community out there, filmmakers that know what you're going through and have the same ideas and voices that you have. So I think it's super important that this, this challenge is around. So thank you, Nick, for, for creating this. Well, thank you so much. And, you know, this is a pre-recorded panel, which is going to air during the Sundance Film Festival. Uh, but we have a Saints uh, football helmet in the background. So I just want to point that out <laughs> because we don't know at this point if the Saints are going to be in the playoffs or not. So... <laughs> Well, Super Bowl, we're in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andy, how about you? I echo my fellow panelists, but also I think it gives us an opportunity to create and be create our own content, right? I think a lot of the time we don't get that opportunity to uh, have that voice in this industry. And I think, yeah, we have a topic we have to follow. But other than that, the doors are open for us to really create something that 
isn't out in the industry right now and um, gives a voice to either marginalized communities or communities that people don't look at. So I, I appreciate the opportunity, but um, without the Disability Film Challenge, you know, Danny said he wouldn't have part of his career. And I don't think that um, other, other voices would be heard if, without this challenge. So that's important. Well, that, that means a lot. And Andy, I'm gonna ask you this question and, and we'll go in reverse uh, answering this question. So why do you think it is important to have an organization like Nalip, who is really there to promote and foster uh, underrepresented voices, including us as people with disabilities? So I'm gonna go a little bit all, a little bit kooky on people, but I'm so <laughs> glad we're having this panel of Latinx participants because for many years and even today, uh, disability has a white lens to it, right? Like everything focuses on, you know, disability and white characters or white culture. And I think that it's so important that we're combining disability in the Latinx community because growing up with a disability and being Latin, it's a very different circumstance um, or getting injured, you know, they want, you know, so having that voice for people with disabilities who are Latin to say, we're out here, we're living our lives, we're not stuck in hospital, we're not praying away our disability, we're proud, disabled Latinos. It's really, really important. And I think that conversation, we're kicking it off and it's just starting um, to be visible in the community. Well, I think it's, it's people like you that are really driving that. So, you know, thank you. Uh, Danny? Yeah, so I think uh, organizations like Nalip are important because, um, first of all, Latins in, in, in the United States, I don't know, we're, we're like the second largest or the minority, if, 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 I'm, if I'm thinking that correctly. But also disabled people are a huge part of the population as well. So, you know, just having us on this panel and, and, and focusing on, on, on the Latinos, you know, it, it brings two two underappreciated minorities together and, and brings it to the forefront. And I think what Andy said, I swear, it, when I became disabled, it, it was so hard for uh, my family to accept and just people in public, you know, like, uh, the, like, a, like a Spanish lady would see me in the store and, and just stare at me like, why is this kid in a wheelchair? You know, it's just something that we didn't grow up with. I, or we give weren't... you money. <laughs> right. <laughs> <It never happened laughs> But it's something we weren't educated on. And, and I think that education is the biggest thing. And that, you know, someone like Nalip who's bringing this to the forefront can educate people because that's really what we need as a, as a culture. That's great. Danielle? Um, echoing what Danny and Andy said, um, just bringing the two communities together and knowing that they don't exclude each other, right? <laughs> We are intersectional people on this panel right now. We're Latinx, we're disabled, and that experience is unique. And so having Nalip acknowledge the disabled community within um, the Latinx community is important because Nalip is, I, I've uh, like attended Nalip's um, different conferences. And what I love so much about them is that it creates community. Latinos, Latinx people are not a monolith. There's so many different types of Latinx people with all different kinds of upbringings and from so many different kinds of countries. And then the American experience coming from those different countries, it's so different. And so I have found a, a huge community through Nalip and to now have it merged with the Easter Seals Disability Challenge. So now the disabled community that is also huge and so diverse coming together it it really it it reflects the world that that we know you know that maybe isn't represented in film and television and so when we are together and we can gather and we can share resources we're able to create really amazing things so that's why i think that leap is really important Absolutely. And you know, it's interesting, we talk about intersectionality, which is, which is such an important thing, you know, that there's not one, when you think of the word disability, 
that word is so diverse in the sense that there's just hundreds, if not thousands of different kinds of disabilities, uh, many that are visible. All of us uh, that are on this panel have visible disabilities. I'm a little person. Uh, I'm, I'm a minority here uh, on, on a couple senses. Uh, one, I'm not Latinx. Uh, two, I'm not a wheelchair user. So all our panelists are wheelchair users. But you know, when you think about disability, actually there's more uh, people with invisible disabilities than there are with visible disabilities. So a lot of it is too, it, it's destigmatizing disability. And certainly, I mean, I, I'm, I'm getting a little old, you know, I'm 38 years old now, you know, so I'll, I'll throw that out there. I'll be honest. It's a new year. I'll be honest. I'm going to stop saying I'm 22. Uh, <laughs> no, but th things have changed. You know, we're seeing disability much more now. And really, we're, we're, we, there's pride in the disability community. Andy, uh, you said growing up as, as somebody uh, with a disability in the Latinx community, uh, that was different. Uh, I'd love you to talk, talk about that. Cause I, I think that's interesting. Do you, do you want to talk any more about, um, you know, what it was like then? Are there differences? Uh, now? I think the, the Latin community looks at disability in a very spiritual way, right? Like, it's like, you know, if you pray hard enough, God will heal you. God will make you better. Or, you know, there's no, access like the ADA sort of image in the Latin community like my grandma and my family was like you you stay home because you can't go anywhere or we can't do anything and so it was a very like taking care of there was not really that empowerment voice from my family from a very young age and I to this day had to educate them on no, it's okay to have a job. I have a 50 hour a week job and I act and produce when I have time. But, you know, to them, they're like, oh my God, what is Andy doing? He's like going kooky and doing all this stuff, but it's me. And I think it's really important for the entertainment industry to st start seeing people with disabilities um, fully, right? In all their diverse imaging, imaging and sort of all their intersectionalities because we use it as a sexy term all the time intersectionality or diversity but we don't really put it into practice right we say it on our presentations so this is why it's really important and really great that we're all doing something about it today and on this panel so I think there's a lot of work we need to do for that culture, our Hispanic culture, to really accept disability is just a part of life. That's awesome. And uh, Danny and Danielle, now you guys are a little different in Andy and that, am I correct? And that you were you became disabled later in life? Like me and Andy, we're, we're the OGs. We've been disabled yeah. since the beginning. <laughs> if I'm, <laughs> uh, maybe not, I don't know, uh, Andy. But uh, Danny and Danielle, does that, has, has that, changed your perspective on what it looks like to be disabled, uh, you know, from, from going into it from two different points of view? Or can you talk at all about that, how, how your view has changed on disability representation and disability in general from growing up? Danny I, or Danielle? <laughs> I acquired my disability when I was 20. And um, before that, I was still an Afro-Latina girl growing up who didn't really see myself on TV anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, unless it was a housekeeper, I didn't really see um, myself represented in TV and film in a meaningful way that felt real to me. And then to have a disability, use a wheelchair, be a bilateral amputee, I definitely don't see that. But um, to what Andy was saying, um, you know, we throw around the terms like intersectionality and diversity. I think what's important is the normalization of disability because that's what media does. When you see films and television shows, you're seeing people who may not look like you, but you get to know them. You you invite them into your home, you know, you enjoy them. And so when you don't see disability on screen you don't have a reference for the people 
in your real life that you may encounter who are disabled. So that's when you do the stare and it's, oh my gosh, and you start asking inappropriate questions. But to normalize disability through film and television is so powerful and so important. And I think that's what all of us like with this panel are trying to do. Like the more accurate our disabled experiences are on film and television, the more access we'll have in real life because people will see that access is important. You know, your favorite character can't join and hang out with all their friends because <laughs> the restaurant or bar is an ADA compliant. You know, you may think about that the next time you're at a place that isn't ADA compliant. Yeah, yeah. And Danny, I'm gonna come back to you in a second. Uh, Danielle, actually, what you're talking about and seeing yourself and that you're not seeing yourself, one, I'd argue that, that we are because we're starting to see you pop up in TV. You know, you're, I mean, you're, you're really shining. You know, you just were in the C, uh, CBS, uh, Viacom CBS Diversity Showcase, which I wrote for, big, big props uh, to Viacom CBS. I wrote a couple years before, but that's a great program. Uh, one that everybody you should look, look at. You don't have to have a disability. This is about uh, you know, highlighting underrepresented voices. Um, and so that's something that you should consider. And so you did great in that showcase. I loved it. You were, you know, the sketches were designed flawlessly and really brought to light the, the comedy and, and addressing, you know, disability and, and kind of being edgy. And I just thought it was really unique and fun. But I, I want to, you know, go back to something else too. Uh, can you talk and, and tell everybody about your experience about, uh, you know, when you were on The Price is Right and that that whole, I mean, because that, I, I just tell everybody what happened and from, you know, you going on Jimmy Kimmel, walk us through what happened, everything. Um, in 2015, I was on The Price is Right and I won a treadmill and <laughs> I use a wheelchair and don't have feet. So that reaction that you're having is one that the audience and the internet had as well. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that was you. <laughs> <laughs> was it you? Oh, it was me. Yeah. <laughs> Viral <laughs> sensation. <laughs> but you owned it. I mean, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. I got to say, for you're talking about you're not seeing yourself represented. I thought it was genius. You were, you know, because you're funny and you're talented and you're smart. And you took that awkward moment and you were involved in it every sense. And you, you use that as an opportunity to kind of show the world that one, you're just a funny person, then you're in this situation. And in many senses, you were not the victim. You were the one driving what was funny, what was hilarious about it. And this really, gave, it gave you a genius platform to be funny and to show the world that, hey, you know, when something happens, don't freak out and panic because I'm cool with it and it's hilarious and it's funny. and. And I think that's what made that such a viral sensation. And you were on Jimmy Kimmel, you know. Yeah, it's and a good thing I'm fast on my feet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Kimmel invited me on because the clip went viral, and it was. And I, I, I have a Twitter, I because I do comedy, and so I was tweeting. Um, I took a screen grab of when they showed the prizes, and it's me looking at them like. <laughs> And I just put when uh, you win a treadmill on national television and don't have feet <laughs> and everyone just started retweeting it. And uh, yeah, I was interviewed by BBC and CNN and People Magazine and Jimmy Kimmel had me as a guest on his show. And I, I, I'm a stand-up comedian and I just ran with it and I had so much fun. And yeah, I, I mean, think, you yeah, killed it. It's thank you, Nick. I think it, it it's just wild because it was so crazy and it was it was such an intense kind of like whirlwind. But I I don't all I don't always think about how oh that really was normalizing for people to see just a funny like woman like I'm being I'm a funny stand up comedian. Yes, I don't have feet, but like I'm still like I'm in on the joke. I'm having a good time. I'm making light of it. And I think that, yeah, that really does humanize but I, but, but I think that, that's, that that is such an important piece uh, to the movement of further inclusion and to having people with disabilities is it's okay 
for you guys to give us a treadmill or to give me something I can't reach. And you don't have to worry about, you know, saying the word little around me because, you know, when we get into this place where we're so concerned, we're so hypersensitive, you're going to start thinking to the point where it's like, hey, this should be about inclusion. We're all smart. We're all able to be a part of the conversation. And I think really though, that, that whole, what happened from the whole thing, it, it was a gift. It was a gift to you and it was a gift to the disability community because it, it allowed you to show your talent and also open up the door to say, look, we can make this a conversation. And this, this really, it, it gave an opportunity to showcase you and you were ready to be showcased and you're, you know, exploding beyond that. Obviously that was just one factor and your talent is, is going to bring you to that next level. But, but I think for, for me uh, and, and for all of us here at, the, at that are both on the panel and that are listening, don't be afraid to, you know, ask a question or, or make a, a conversation or, or, or you know, I think the, the worst thing we can do is, is be so afraid to uh, say something that's going to be wrong. Now, you, you need to have a balance. Don't start saying stuff that's derogatory and, you know, <laughs> but it, it, it is important for us to have that. And now, uh, Danny, I'm going to, we took that little Price is Right, um, you know, little side trip there, but uh, I'm going to bring us back into the, the game show that is uh, yeah, bringing this into life. Uh, what, what is it? You, you did get disabled, uh, disabled later in life. Um, you've said that, that in some senses, you've actually worked more as somebody with a disability having uh, been disabled. I, to me, that's, that's very interesting. Can you talk about that? And also, if you want to elaborate any more about, um, you know, how, how, disability representation, how, how you feel like it's changed from seeing it from both lenses as somebody that wasn't disabled and somebody that is. Yeah, absolutely, Nick. So, but first of all, I want to give Danielle props because um, that's like an infamous story in the community. <laughs> <laughs> I just never, I never put two and two together until you said it. And I was like, oh my, I can't wait to tell my friends. I'm, I'm, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I was, I was injured later in life and when I was injured, I think it came at the perfect time because as an actor, I wasn't doing anything. I was literally one of those cliches living in LA, bartending. Uh, you know, I was like a lifer bartender who said I was an actor, but I wasn't doing anything and I wasn't focused. So when I became injured, it, you know, you, you pretty much your whole life is a reset. So it was almost like I was born again and I had to learn relearn all these things that you you just was everyday normal things using your bathroom getting dressed eating just normal everyday things that you take for granted so when it came time to realize what I was going to do with my career I honestly had no idea what I was going to do I didn't know like I said before I didn't know that there was opportunities for people with disabilities to be in the industry and my only you know my only thought and memory of a disabled character was for Professor X on X-Men, who was played by an able-bodied person. And, you know, Christopher Reeves, who had that life-altering uh, accident that left him, I mean, a full quad. He couldn't, you know, he couldn't move anything. But that was really the only two people that I had to go on. So I was like, there's no way that I'm going to be able to do this. So for me, it was uh, the, the, the Disability Film Challenge that really opened my eyes to there's like this whole community. So once I was engaged with the, the, the film festival, then I started doing my research and I, you know, going on social media, you find all these other people with disabilities. And I started uh, wanting to advocate because I noticed that there was a lot of roles for people with disabilities still being played by able-bodied actors. And it, it started really bugging me and, and getting under my skin because I know that there's a lot of talent out there. And I'm not just talking about myself. I mean, there's there's so much talent in the disab disability community. And the number one reason I hear people cast able-bodied actors is because they can't find the talent. But that's just lazy. I think you're just, you know- The you talent just, is I, out there. You're out where, I, right. And it's still happening to this day. I mean, currently, you know, productions are coming out and there was a film recently, I'm not gonna name the name because I honestly forgot about it. 
but the three main characters in it were written as disabled. So when I saw the trailer, it was like, you know, it was going on Facebook, people were talking about it. And I'm like, oh, this looks cool. And as soon as I watched the trailer, I went on IMDb. It's like what I do every time. And I'm like, who are these actors? And sure enough, all three actors were able-bodied, not, not one, like they had um, minor supporting characters that had disabilities, but the three main characters who were written as disabled weren't disabled. And that really rubbed me the wrong way because I mean, one of the characters I could have played easily. I've never heard anything about this casting or anything like that. So when I dug into to research the film a little more, that's what I heard from the, the production is that they didn't have time to cast. So they just went with the people that they had already. And, and you know, I, I, I kind of started a little Twitter war against this film. I don't have a big following, so it didn't really go anywhere. But I did connect with some people and some other uh, uh, people in on Twitter who are big in the disability community. So that. Well, yeah. we're going to have to get, we're going to have to get you on the prices. Right. You know, so we get that whole uh, we get that going. No, it's it, it is a. Uh, you know, look, th this is a balance. And I want to get to this in, in a minute, um, because this is very important about um, how how things have been done right and and where content creators can can change things a little bit. Uh, and, but you also talked a lot about your trajectory in your career. Um, Andy, we, we heard from Danielle and her as a comedian. I, I'd like to hear a little bit more about you, and, you know, you being an actor, you being a writer, but also as, as an activist, um, Andy, you, you, you work in, uh, can you, t can you talk about your career and, and what you do? I can and talk about my career vaguely, but since I work, uh, for, for DC, I can't go into detail, but what I can say is I've been a disability rights advocate and I do work on national policy and disability. And my goal is to really marry my acting career, my producer career to my policy work. I think um, I appreciate your comment, Nick, about not shutting the door on inclusion, right? Like we're in this culture sometimes where we cancel people before like having a conversation with them. And I think for our community, especially for the Latin community, disabled community, I'm LGBTQ as well. I think we need to be the first ones to open the door and say like, all right, let's talk about this. Why is this wrong? Why do we need to move forward? I've worked in some very polarizing environments and I like to call myself a unicorn per se in those environments because I come in with my LGBTQ face and they're just like, whoa, what is he gonna say? What is he gonna do? How is he gonna react to this? And I think what's key for my career and my trajectory as an actor or producer is my authenticity, which we all have on this panel, right? We speak in an authentic voice. We speak from our personal experience. And I think if you do that, no matter where you come from, people are gonna acknowledge you. And I think that's really important for actors, producers, directors, creators, to be authentic, right? We know so many influencers nowadays that have these like fake lives on Instagram and fake lives on Twitter. And then you go behind the scenes and they're living next to a dumpster, but you would never know because you know they have that one square that looks fancy. So I think that it's our job um, to call that out when we see it, but also start creating our own authenticness for the industry because I've been in castings where casting directors have aha moments when I roll in and they're like, you're disabled, you're Latin, you're gay. Oh my God, like I didn't even know that that person existed. And I'm like, hi, I'm here. And they're like, <laughs> that's so cool. So I think like, not to say anything bad about casting or producers, they just have so much on their plate sometimes that they don't see the potential in an individual as an artist. So you have to put it in their face sometimes to show them that it is possible. Yeah, you brought up uh, just Latinx uh, disability representation. What, what is the current state of representation? Um, has it changed? What you, can you talk, I want each of you to talk about, you know, from you growing up to where it is now, where you wanna see it go. 
Well, I, I, I'll i just jump in and say like the only other person that I've seen represented are the two panelists here uh, that I'm sharing the screen with, right? They're the only Latin disabled individuals that I've seen represented in a major way on television. Um, I will say that I'm waiting for my moment where they're like, okay, now we need a gay Latin character. And I'm like, hi, I'm here. Um, I'm not getting any younger. So if anybody would look in the cast, do it soon. Um, <laughs> but I really think like that's, it's important that we're all on this panel, but it's kind of sad that it's 2021 and we're like just having this conversation now to say that, um, see us, right? Cause we've always been here. It's just now that the industry is like getting a little woke and saying it's, it's important. So I think we have a long way to go, right? I think that each of us in this panel and in this group need to be in every show, in every, you know, in some piece, right? So it doesn't have to be us, but it can be people that represent us um, in every show and every project in some way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we, I will say that there are uh, several, not several, there's many other uh, very talented disabled artists. Uh, some of you may be listening, a couple shout outs off the top of my head, Tamara Mina, Audie Angel, you know, they make great film challenge films and there's, there is a community, there are people out there. So it's not just the three of us, you know, and I'm not, you know, the, I believe me, I'm, I, I'm not, uh, I, I know my role here and, and honestly, uh, I'm humbled to be here and to be able to have this discussion with each of you. And Shout out to uh, Selena Luna. She was. Selena, uh, Luna, yes. That's uh, it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Feel free and to Coco. Mm -hmm. that reminds me, so Thank you. Yeah, I love Selena Luna, but she's, yeah, a stand-up comedian, actor, little person, Latina Absolutely. extraordinaire, yeah. And we, you know, there's, you know, so many, Drew Presta, so that, you know, there's a lot of, uh, of talent, and, and Danielle, as you were talking, do you want to expand further on, on, on the subject, uh, just, you know? Sure, I think that there's, you know, it's getting better, that's... <laughs> It's getting better thanks to Nalip, you know, and the effort is, it's getting better because we're making it better. It's because, you know, the Latinx community is forcing their way in uh, production companies and writers rooms and executive positions and saying, this is the content we need. Um, you know, it's always been there. The talent's always been there. Let's put it on TV now. And, um, the Disability Film Challenge has, you know, allowed the disabled film community to find each other, network, create together, have examples of work. Um, there's still so much further that we need to go. I think part of the part of it is that your story that you're telling on your TV show or in your movie doesn't have to center around our disability. It doesn't have to be about an Afro Latina who uses a wheelchair. I can be a doctor. I can be a lawyer. I can be, you know, a woman in a coffee shop. Like there, <laughs> when you look outside of what you think disability is supposed to look like or what you think a Latinx person is supposed to look like, then you realize that we can exist anywhere and that furthers representation. You know, I'm just, I, I don't, I went out for a role. It was a house manager. I was like, well, at least it's not a housekeeper this time, but <laughs> <laughs> step up, step up. <laughs> you know, it's like a little step up, but um, you know, it, the romantic lead, um, you know, um, an evil mastermind. Just I don't know, like it's wild. We are in a creative industry, literally. <laughs> Film and television is all about creating something, stories, narratives from nothing, right? Or bringing to life like stories that people maybe can't tell, but we all universally experience. So why can't those stories include us? Yeah. D Danny, do you have anything to add on, on this? Yeah, um, I definitely, uh, like what Danielle and Andy said for sure, like the normalization, like, she, like Danielle said about uh, just being like the normal guy in a coffee shop, 
the the romantic lead, which I'm still trying to get, but uh, we'll see what happens there. No, but <laughs> uh, hey, Danny, with that, heartbreaker, Danny, I mean, you're the heartbreaker. Yeah, calm no, down, Danny. Is. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> he is a romantic lead. All all of you are. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know what? I I feel like I don't know if this is PC or not, but I feel like in Hollywood and entertainment industry, they're like there come these fads, like you know, every so, so often there's like a, a wave of something that everybody thinks is popular. And I think that uh, the disability fad is coming soon. There's a lot of more shows coming with featuring people with disabilities, but I think they're, uh, I, I don't think they're hitting every aspect because there's so many different disabilities. And, and what I'm seeing is that it's, it's, it's one or two extremes. It's either you're really, exp um, inspirational disabled character you're like really depressed you know there, there's like that gray area that they're missing out on and and there that gray area is where a lot of us just live in really you know we're we're normal people we have you know vices and we have bad habits and we do bad stuff you know and we're we do good stuff we you know we we do inspire people but we we have normal lives just like everyone else so if we put that on screen, like Danielle said, it'll be easier for the public to accept us instead of staring at us and, and acting scared like when we, when we roll by or walk by. And I do think that it comes down to disabled artists, you know, writing and producing their own content to put out there. So with the film challenge, that is a big step. And I, I do have hope for the future because I've, ha I've, I've had a few auditions recently where the the characters are like really fully f like layered and we're not like the look at me I'm inspirational character like I I'm doing some messed up stuff and I'm being a womanizer and you know these are the roles that I, I think once we put out there people are just going to really relate to and, and just see us as everyone else. Yeah no I think that that's that's really important that's a, that's an important topic that you bring up is that the roles don't have to center around us having disabilities. And in, in fact, the majority, I'm a little person, my wife's a little person, but the majority of the time, we do not talk about being little people. We just are talking about, you know, what we missed on TV or uh, I didn't do the dishes. So many times we're living our lives and that doesn't center fully on us having a disability. I mean, it is a part of our lives. But I think it's it's very similar with the Latinx uh, representation in general. Same thing. I don't think the roles have to be written about individuals uh, being of Latinx, you know, uh, community. Or it could just be, you know, hey, th this was written for somebody Polish, and now Danny J. Gomez is a good, you know, actor, and he does a good job. So a lot of it is getting in the door. Um, I'm very proud that we've been doing a lot of professional development work and workshops and it's just getting in the door in front of industry. Uh, we did a voiceover workshop that, uh, with voice casters that um, some of us here were, were a part of and then we uh, did as well at DreamWorks Animation. But you know, when you think about voiceover work, it could be, sure, the role could go to somebody uh, for a character in a wheelchair, but also you could be uh, a secret service agent, you know, as a little person. And, and I think that that really is allowing the, the doors to be opening up in, in uh, voiceover work for sure, where you're not seeing it, but then really more broadly, uh, just in the entertainment as a whole. So I, I'm gonna ask each of you, um, what do you think uh, common errors that content creators have made um, when projects didn't come fully uh, representative of us as people with individuals uh, with disabilities and also Latinx disabilities, just in general, what errors do content creators make when, when they're reaching out into, into the disability community? I think on the executive and producer level, I think it's about um, not considering the disabled community. I think that's really what it is, is it's not that we're not out here. It's not that we're not available, but it's about the people in charge who get to make a decision about who gets an audition, who's in the room, who, who do we have in mind? 
have us in mind, have the disabled community at large in mind, have the Latinx community in, in mind. Because I, I think like th there's such a lack of um, shows that feature predominantly Latinx cast and shows that feature predominantly disabled cast. And I think the industry wants that one show that's gonna appeal to the entire community. And that just isn't, that's not, that's not a show that anyone wants to watch. It's a watered down show that lacks specificity, you know, with writing what they, they always say is specificity is universal, right? So focus on telling a really unique, interesting story about a specific person and consider us for it instead of trying to create this magic we're gonna, it's gonna be the disability show and it's gonna have all the disabled people. And it's like, and you know, and no one's fun or interesting or does bad things and nothing ever happens, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think like, it's, 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 you know what I mean? It's, it's both of that. It's create, consider us yeah. for projects in general, expand your idea of what a lead can look like and expand your idea of what a disabled person can be on screen. Yeah, now that that's important. And, and you bring it up that, you know, the industry as a whole, you know, you gave suggestions for those creative executives and those executives. Um, I got to say, you know, big shout out to uh, many of our sponsors, um, in particular, uh, Adobe, Viacom, CBS, IMDb Pro, Dell Technologies, NBC Universal, Sony Pictures, and Warner Media. Because uh, honestly, the film challenge wouldn't happen without their support. And really, they've been, you know, so actively uh, pushing to to really bring us in more. And and you know, I think it is it is. I I really see that it's not just uh, hey we want to sponsor or we would like to, you know, help market. I mean, they really are bringing us in and, you know, from you being on, on the CBS, uh, Viacom CBS diversity showcase, it's your talent. It gave you that platform. And so I think we're going to see more and more. And, and I'm very optimistic because of just how much excitement that I've seen from that industry level. But really when we're, when we're talking about uh, the Nalip audience, now, the, the Leap audience, uh, people that are listening, that are tuning in from around the world, we have so many talented writers and producers and directors, uh, some of which are at that studio and TV level. Some are, you know, just like uh, many of us on the panel, we're still finding our, our way and, and we're still creating as artists. Um, what, Danny or, or Andy, what, what errors do you think that they make? Uh, you know, and you can still talk more about the industry as a whole or the executives and, and the networks and studios, but, but what about uh, if we got a, a film student who's, who's uh, tuning in right now, what, what advice or what could you tell them, hey, here's what's been wrong uh, and here's what you could be right. It, Danny and, and Andy, what are your thoughts on that? So one of the things I would say just really quickly pushing back a little bit, not that I don't agree with everyone, is that I think as a culture, we need to start looking at disability as part of our culture, right? I mean, I have two lovely panelists that uh, disability happened to them, right? And disability happens to everybody. You're either going to age into it, you're going to be born with it, or you're going to have an accident and there you go. So I think that uh, unfortunately, yes, we need to create our own content and we need to have support from the community, but people just need to wake up and need to realize that disability is part of the culture and they need to get over it. And it needs to be less of a conversation of us versus them. And like, it, it's gonna happen to us. So why can't it just be normal? And why can't it just be it, what it is? Um, I think for students, I've spoken to you, USC film students before and I said, now this is in your hands. You have no excuses. You've seen disability. You, you grew up with Breaking Bad and other examples of disability in the media. You know how to do it right. Um, don't do it wrong. Don't use this as tokens either, right? Like don't like make a story about a disabled Latin person just to make a story about a disabled Latin person. We are in every part of the culture. So just put us in that space. So it's not like 
you're special, right? No offense to being special, but I want to be special in a different way, not because of my Latinness or my disability. I want to be special because I'm talented, unique, and I have a voice. Um, but I think that people just need to, and students, this, this is to you. It's your job to go out there and do the work, do the casting, and say that I want a diverse cast. And if it's not going to be a diverse cast, I'm not gonna make my project until I get that diverse cast or that diverse production. Um, and I, we know that this industry runs on money. We get it, that you need a name attached to a project to make the project happen. But there are talented people with disabilities out there and only a few of them have the names that people will say like, I will attach this project to Nick or Danny or Danielle um, or Andy because they they are the names. It's time that we become the names in the industry, so people are excited about our projects. Yeah, no, and and that's a really great point. Uh, that one again, it doesn't have to be all about our disability, and I think that that's where people do end up falling into that trap in some senses where. Uh, the, the disabled character becomes the token or it becomes a little bit too much because you're focusing too much on the disability. And, uh, you know, I, it's going to make it more inclusive. The more uh, you make your casting diverse, you know, and you, you make it more inclusive, it's more interesting too. And especially if, if, the, if it's, you're not writing it about that. I mean, a short film uh, I produced and starred in, I did with Retta, uh, which many, uh, I don't know if you guys know from Parks and Recreation, she's uh, she's amazing, talented comedian. She's black. She's, uh, you know, and she's not uh, the t stereotypical five foot, you know, three, you know, 90 pound actress. And so when we were, you know, making that film, I was like, this is more interesting, the dynamic between me and her and not addressing our, you know, differences in our size or, or how, so, so it's really, it's having creatives involved that you're going to make a project more inclusive from the get-go. And Danny, I'd like to hear from you on this. And specifically, I'd like to uh, have you talk about your collaboration with Carl Hansen, you know, who you've made several uh, Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge films with. You know, you've been the, the most recent documentary you produced and, and you've really been involved, not just as an actor, but on the other side. Can you talk about one, any other thoughts um, that uh, Danielle and Andy brought up? If you have anything else to add to that, and then separately, um, your experience of, through making content more uh, inclusive. Yeah, so just to butt up with Andy and Danielle were saying, um, if you writers, if you want to write a story and tell a story about people with disabilities, consult with someone who has that disability, the specific disability you want to write about. Because there are many different ones. I don't really know what Andy goes through. He doesn't really know what I go through. And vice versa with Danielle, you know, like we all go through separate different experiences with our disabilities. Um, and that's for filmmakers as well. If you're gonna shoot a movie with people with dis disabilities, cast authentically, find those people, uh, have them on set, have them behind the scenes so you understand and, and, and I guess empathize of what we go through and how we work and, and you know, how we are on set. Um, that leads me to Carl Hansen. Carl Hansen is uh, a white, able-bodied man. Before the film challenge, he didn't know anyone who was disabled. He heard about this film challenge and he decided to do it because he's been doing the um, LA 48, which is the you know the big 48 film uh, 48 hour film challenge. He's been doing that for like 15 years, and he never heard about the disability film challenge. So he was like, "Hey, I love doing these little challenges. Let me do this one." And when I talked to him, he's, it said it changed his life because it, it opened his eyes and his world to this disability community who he didn't know were talented and were hardworking and would put 100% of themselves into their, their work. So I guess I, I, I was calling my Scorsese because now we work on, we literally do every film together. And he always consults with me if he's not writing something for me you know, maybe it's for somebody else, a female or something, he'll consult with me and ask me what I think. And I think that's super important is that we have people who aren't disabled advocating for us as well. 
because you know it sucks but people are going to listen more to the you know someone who who's, who isn't disabled than than they are to us so if we have a champion you know somebody in our corner like a Carl Hansen who you know he wants to push these stories forward and he wants to showcase actors like myself in in his pieces that that really shows the other person like who's maybe yeah. nervous about I, well, I don't know if I should do this project. Well, Carl, you know, he did it. He loved it. He shared his experience and you can do it too. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that that's, that's an important thing to bring up. You know, we're, we're getting ready to wrap up here, everyone. I want to give you a chance to kind of uh, talk about your hopes, uh, where you think this is going to go moving forward and then give yourselves uh, a chance to plug your uh, social media handles, where people could find you. Um, but, but really, I think one major theme that all of you have uh, brought up throughout this conversation is that it is about having us have a seat at the table creatively. And it's about continuing these relationships when, when uh, Danielle, when you're, you know, doing your stand up and, and you're, you know, or you're on The Price is Right or Jimmy Kimmel, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're giving yourselves a chance to open up and be yourself, but, but letting other people kind of see who they are. And I think for, uh, non-disabled uh, creatives that are that are tuning in, to really really think about uh, your project and who that you could bring in um, that's going to have um, you know uh, 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 the ability to make your project more um, authentic because that's what this is all about and that's going to translate um, to to a better project. Uh, shout out to Pancho Moller, or another uh, amazing uh, film challenge participant. Um, you know, I keep thinking and I'm going to be tweeting along the way. Uh, but Danny, where, where can people find you? Do you have anything else to say in terms of wrapping up about your hopes and, and plug yourself? All right. So my, uh, I'm going to plug myself right now. Uh, you can find all of my social medias and my acting reel at my website, www.dannyjgomez.com. Everything is there. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is uh, one thing you were saying about telling stories about people with disabilities doesn't have to be about their disability. I, I agree and I disagree because I wish that I knew more about spinal cord injury when I became, when, when I had my accident because it, spinal cord injury is nowhere on, on mainstream media. I, I, I don't see it. I only know it because of my fellow you know, people in the community. So uh, I did start writing my own project. Uh, I'm the lead, obviously. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I think that it's a great story because it'll educate, you know, the general population, if you will, uh, of what someone in, with spinal cord injury goes through. But it's not just about that. It's about everything, how it affects everyone around them and how the world affects him. So if you're interested, hit me up. Yeah. And that's important. You know, not, not all of us are going to have the same point of view. And, and that's a great point that, you know, there's education through media and then Beyond that, just let Danny be awesome and charming and funny and a Saints fan. <laughs> <laughs> Who that? Andy, how about you? Um, you can find all my stuff at theandyarias.com. Um, and also my Twitter and um, Facebook handles are Andy's Wheels um, with a Z. So find me there. Um, the one thing I will say, and I'm also producing a film called Danny's Twins. So go there and check it out. It's, it's D A N. D-A-N-I and then twins um, that'll be coming out in 2021. The one thing I will say about disability in general is that it comes in so many shades, colors and diverse backgrounds um, and, uh, and sexualities. I'm LGBTQ, we do have sex, calm down, it's okay. <laughs> um, it's time to start telling those stories really about like adult people living diverse and dynamic lives. Um, it's not just that we're sitting in a chair and we want you to feel for us. We live our lives just like everybody else. And I think those authentic stories need to be told. That's awesome. Danielle? Guys, um, I am Danielle Perez and you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Diva Deluxe, no E at the end. Um, I have virtual comedy shows coming up, so check the links in my bio. And I also host Wow Rude Podcast, um, and it's out every Wednesday on all wherever you listen to podcasts, and also YouTube. You can watch me on YouTube. 
<laughs> hosting a podcast. But um, final thoughts about uh, disability and representation and Latinx disabled representation. When you include us in your projects, it makes your projects better. In front of the camera, behind the camera, um, that's, that's what it is. That's the truth of the matter. We make your projects better. Mm. Well, I, I, I can't add anything to that because that was a great way to close. Um, you heard it and you got three talented people. Um, there's dozens more, if not hundreds more, a talented Latinx disabled uh, actors, writers, directors, producers. Uh, so hit us up. Make sure to watch our films, disabilityfilmchallenge.com. Uh, go to Naleep's website. Um, make sure to go to all their amazing Naleep uh, summits and all their uh, educational forums. Um, you know, together we're really changing the way the world sees disability. Um, and that part of that is by us creating our own content. So uh, make sure to keep including us and thinking about us. If you're an up and coming this, um, you know, really be thinking about how can I make my project a little bit more unique, a little more diverse. And, you know, like Danny said, maybe you do want to do that spinal cord injury, or maybe you don't. And you just want to have people be uh, professional bakers, you know, and they just happen to have a certain disability. So, you know, really, uh, the sky is the limit in terms of what you can create, but really be thinking about people with disabilities. So thank you so much to Nalit for hosting us for the Sundance Film Festival. None of us are in ski jackets, but I feel like we're all there together. Uh, so thank you so much. And I'm at Nick Novicki and you can find me at Nick Novicki and at Disability Film Challenge. So thanks so much. Thank you everyone for joining us. On behalf of Nalib, we're very grateful for our members who consistently show support for the amplification of inclusive voices and storytelling. And a tremendous thank you to our sponsor, IMDb Pro and our partners, Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. If you haven't done so already, follow us on social media at underscore org on Instagram and Twitter.